Good morning, I'm Councilmember uh, Ben Kalos. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, we're joined by uh, Councilmember uh, Lori Cumbo, who is chair of the Women's Issues Committee. We will be joined very shortly by uh, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, who chairs the Small Business uh, Committee. And uh, we're also joined here today by Planned Parenthood of New York City, Nero Pro-Choice of New York, the Women's City Club of New York, the Lower East Side Girls Club, and New York Communities for Change. And all these people came out to support back-to-work legislation today. Uh, we have a uh, finance committee coming up, so I'm going to actually ask our Women's Issues Committee Chair, Lori Cumbo, to uh, give our opening remarks. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Lori Cumbo, and I am the chair of the Women's Issues Committee, but also the city council member for the 35th Council District. Today is such an important day because it is the last day of Women's History Month. So it means we have an entire rest of the year to celebrate, to make more history, and to break glass ceilings so that next year we have an even greater Women's History Month celebration to recognize. Each day, not just in Women's History Month, we celebrate women achievements, but we also gain attention to the devastating injustice that our city and nation desperately grapples with, the state of affairs of economic and leadership advancement for women. We must recommit to the struggle that women face daily. And these struggles happen particularly in the workforce with gender pay equity, no paid family leave, and no structure or resources in place to ease the transitions of parents returning back to the workforce after having a child. We are only one of a few nations in the entire world that does not have a paid family or maternal leave. This is something that brings us back um, centuries because we have not come forward with the rest of our countries in the world as it pertains to women's paid leave. This is not just a women's issue. When women are denied the opportunities to go back into the workforce, we lose a critical brain trust that is not a part of our workforce when we lose women as a result of taking time off for the ability to raise their family. We stand here today and ask the city to support and assist parents returning back to work. Both mothers and fathers, our sons and daughters, will benefit tremendously from the back to work bill and the five point plan. I could not think of a more important topic to end today's Women's History Month program. Whether parents leave the workforce due to the cost of childcare, a lack of paid leave, a desire to spend more time with their children, or any other myriad of reasons, parents should have our city's full support when they choose to return. We have to provide those resources to make sure that all women, all families have an opportunity and all of the resources necessary to gain those opportunities to enter the workforce. While we would like to think it's so easy to just take time off and then jump back into the workforce, we understand that dynamics change, technology changes, relationships in the workforce have changed, and it's very difficult, particularly for women, to re-enter the workforce after significant time off. We have to do more as a city to make sure that they are reacclimated with all of the tools and all of the opportunity in order to make that happen. And I want to give you a little bit of stats, stats and figures about how that happens. According to the Pew Center for Research, Women leave the workforce in greater numbers for family reasons. 39% of women took significant time off compared to 24% of men. 27% of women quit their jobs compared to 10% of men. Of those who took time off, 31% of mothers said it hurt their careers with 18% uh, of men. Stay-at-home mothers span all socioeconomic classes and races. 34% are living in poverty compared with 12% of working mothers. And we know it to be true that women are the majority of workers who are left behind. We know that they are the majority of minimum wage workers. We know that they are the majority of those that are underserved in the workforce. So this is an important time for us to come together. I'm so proud to partner with two dynamic men who recognize how important this issue is because they understand that if they give their wives, their sisters, their daughters, and their mothers 
all of the opportunities that they deserve. They're going to have a more robust family and a happier family. So it's very important that we continue to support this bill, and I am so I'm so excited um, and really elated that men members of the council are stepping up in a major way because they understand how important this issue is to all of New Yorkers. Thank you very much. Happy Women's History Month. I'm so excited to be here with so many dynamic women as well as dynamic men who get it, finally. Thank you. Thank you very much. As council member uh, Combo alluded to, today is the last day of Women's History Month. But the fight for gender equity cannot can be confined to just one month. We must fight for gender equity every day of the year. Much about the workforce in our city, state, and country still isn't fair. In New York State, women make 88 cents for every dollar that a man makes. New York State has no paid family leave law. Women face discrimination daily on the job and incentives cause women to leave the workforce in greater numbers and find it more difficult to come back. Three times as many women as men quit their jobs to care for family. Of those, three times as many women as men say that it hurt their careers. Stay-at-home parents span all socio... Stay-at-home parents span all socioeconomic classes and races. They are as diverse as our city. If and when they decide to return to the workforce, they need the city's full support and assistance. A number of so-called on-ramping programs at private companies across the United States were cut during the Great Recession. Today, we tell you that the city must fill that gap. The legislation we propose would expand New York City's Workforce One program to include more resources specifically for parents seeking to re-enter the job market. Workforce One has 18 career centers across all five boroughs, as well as online resources. According to the Center for Urban Future in 2013, they helped connect 40,000 New Yorkers with jobs. But what does expand mean? <clears throat> Expanded technology training. 50% of current jobs and 77% of jobs of the future require technology skills. These skills depreciate after years out of the workforce and they must be refreshed. That's right. Proactive outreach. The program should be well advertised so parents know they're out there. Any parent considering returning to work should be able to rely on city resources. Third, public-private partnerships. Dozens of major private companies offer workforce reentry training. New York City should partner with a wide range of business to create re workforce reentry opportunities. Leveraging skills. Workforce One counselors must learn how to offer assistance with resumes that may not have been updated for a couple of years, though parents have been building skills the whole time. More information online. Workforce One should be a one-stop shop for information and training, not just a way to connect to in-person resources. We envision a city where any parent is confident that he or she has the support necessary to re-enter the workforce and does not need to struggle to do so. We envision a world where fewer than 30% of women who choose to take time off work suffer damage to their careers. New York City has put universal pre-K into action. We have the ability to lead the nation when it comes to progressive, family-friendly policies, but we aren't there yet and we aren't even close enough. Our back-to-work legislation and plan will help parents realize their goals, contribute to our economy, and help close the gender gap for all New Yorkers. We urge its swift passage. I'd like to now call on uh, Councilmember Robert Cornegy, Chair of the Small Business Committee, for his words. <coughs> Thank you and good morning. Good morning. So as uh, Councilmember Kalos mentioned, I'm here as the Chair of Small Business, but more importantly, I'm here as the husband of Michelle R. Cornegy and the father of Nyla Catherine Ellen Cornegy and Mia Imani Cornegy. And I'm proud to be part of a growing caucus here at the City Council, the Men Who Get It Caucus. <laughs> I believe the current administration's focus on updating our city's workforce training system to respond to expanding opportunities in the, work, in the marketplace 
and emphasize the importance of jobs that pay a living wage is extremely important. I hosted two workforce roundtables in my district and learned a tremendous amount. At the same time, I've been working with women's legal and public health advocates. They've supported me in maintaining the first community lactation station in any government office in New York State and in holding to forum, holding forums to help women understand their rights in the workplace, especially with respect to caring for their families. The bill we're introducing today combines both of these issues, like maintaining a publicly accessible lactation room. It communicates that our city wants to go beyond the bare minimum. We want to actively support parents who want to return to work after a separation, and despite the strides that have been made toward, toward equality, those parents are predominantly women. It acknowledges that the barriers that, face, that they face are real and have real consequence for their present economic security and for their futures. Budget season is all about learning about our actual priorities by scrutinizing our spending. This bill will make working women and all parents returning to work a real priority, <laughs> supported by the allocation of reasonable targeted resources. It's an idea whose idea has come, and I'm proud to be part of moving it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, and Lori, for your uh, leadership on these issues, and proud to be one of the founding members of the Men Who Get It Caucus. <laughs> I'd uh, now like to uh, call on Erica Cohen. Uh, I got to know her over my campaign. She took time off work and uh, would be one of the people who could benefit from this program. Uh... Hi, my name is Erica Cohen and I just want to share my story with you. Um, I was in grad school when I had my, my daughter and um, I had to take two years off to care for her. Uh, for financial reasons, it's hard to pay for grad school and also pay for child care. And I'm finally finishing up my, gra my grad degree um, while I'm still the primary caregiver of my daughter. And I've been looking for work and it's been very difficult. I've been out of, out of work for five years and it's hard to re-enter the workforce. Like uh, Councilmember Kahlo said, there are some skills that I, that I don't have or I'm rusty at and I think any re-entry program that could help me with those skills and that can just help me with the sort of unique obstacles of returning to work, whether you're a stay-at-home mother or a stay-at-home father, um, there's some unique challenges, and I think I think this plan would would help parents with these unique obstacles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now hear from the Win Women's City Club of New York. Thank you, Council Member. My name is Marie Zisa from the Women's City Club of New York. The Women's City Club is a nonprofit advocacy and civic engagement institution. We would like to commend council members Kalos, Cornegie, and Cumbo for their efforts on this bill. Too often, parents seeking to return to the workforce have to fend for themselves. This bill will support parents as they return to the workforce, support their families, and strengthen New York's economy as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to now call on Gabe Gallucci from New York Communities for Change. How are we doing? Woo. It's an honor for me to be here, aside um, Councilman Ben Kalos and these lovely ladies. Um, you know, as a leader in the labor movement, uh, this is a no-brainer, right? Women are consistently underrepresented. Um, this bill will make sure that parents and females are represented in the workplace and that they have opportunity to better themselves. Um, you know, I stand uh, in strength, uh, strong support with the councilman, um, and I, I look forward to working with him and passing this uh, with flying colors. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, now I'll ask the uh, Lower East Side Girls Club uh, for their remarks. Good morning. The Lower East Side Girls Club is thrilled to be here today. Since 1996, our founding, we have realized the importance of helping adult women uh, find resources, job training, and employment opportunities um, in the community. And we're so excited to see the council take on this legislation and help women re-enter the workforce. 
Thank you very much for uh, Council Members uh, Cumbo and Carnegie for coming out, and also for all the advocates and their support. Uh, we're now open for questions. Uh, you mentioned paid family leave. Um, is there going to be a push, maybe perhaps, to Yes, uh, I think that anything we can do for a paid family, a pad, paid family leave law in uh, New York City and New York State would be a uh, huge step forward for us. Uh, along the way, uh, we still do need to make sure that people returning to work uh, can and that we support them in returning to work. Thank you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the partnerships with company, private companies and how that Sure, so Workforce One currently partners with companies. Uh, the only way that this works is with public-private partnership and making sure that we are working with our uh, Workforce One centers to identify employers who can and will hire parents coming back to work without discriminating against them for taking time off from uh, uh, what they had been doing and recognizing all the skills that they've built while they've been parenting. Uh, I think that the 18 centers we've got is a uh, great start and is sufficient infrastructure for what we need to do. Uh, additionally, we've got um, uh, the online resources we're hoping to add, and uh, hopefully we can serve even more than the 40,000 people that were served in 2013 according to the Center for Urban Future. Um, so, so, number one request in my office is stop the rain transfer station. Number two is deal with transportation. Third is find me affordable housing. Four is help me get a job. And a lot of the time people are coming and saying, you know what, when I left the workforce we were using WordPerfect or we were using an older version of Microsoft Word and I need your support. I need a place that I can get computer training. I need to learn how to use the new version of Microsoft Office. I need to deal with social media. Um, sometimes skills just as basic as uh, becoming more proficient at emails and the features you can use there. So with the fact that we need so much more technology skills on the job, uh, this is a place where we can provide it through Workforce One. And it's already a location that folks are uh, going to. So it's just about making sure that the skills training is available and targeted towards people of all socioeconomic classes uh, and uh, job categories to provide them with the skills they need to return. So it's basically reinvestment in workforce one targeting uh, to help? With parents and then advertising to let parents know that this is really a place that you can come for help getting back to work. Let me uh, see. Let me know if you, uh, do you want us to restart or? I have to get it one-on-one -on -one anyway. So. Perfect, okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you to the advocates.